Well, would you believe it? I'm on holiday out in the land of spaghetti westerns and Umarex contact me to tell me they're releasing not one, not two, but three of my all-time favourite guns. And boy, could I have done some amazing review out here in southern Spain of the new dual single-action Colts and that Rio Bravo underlever shell ejecting rifle. <sighs> get your mum to get the biscuits and cups of tea ready. It's Saturday afternoon matinee time. Big John is on the TV. One of my all-time favourites, too. It's Rio Bravo. <sighs> Sadly, it's back to cold, wet, and not so interesting, blighty in March, to complete a review of these three. Now, I've said it so many times, I do think Umrex, when they put their mind to it, are capable of producing some of the best replica guns out there in the Egan world. Now, not everyone gets it. Not everyone understands the desire to own a piece of history or fulfill their childhood dreams. <laughs> it's getting warm in here, it really is. So, owning something that comes so very close to what their heroes of the day were using. Now, these are not designed to be used as pest controls or pure target tools. It's not about power and accuracy, it's about ownership to some, to others it's reliving the past and yet others it's enjoying the feel of a small piece of history. And then there is the quality of build and all at a pretty affordable price. <laughs> Umrex know all these things and they have made these revolvers and rifles to meet these people's wants and needs. You know, at Christmas, my wife, Mrs. AAR, bought me this Beretta 92, and she was stunned when I immediately had it framed and hung on the wall without even shooting it. To me, it is a thing of beauty. These Western-themed guns are just the same to my mind and to many others. The revolvers are up to the usual high quality standards we've come to expect from Umarex, but they have released them as a pair in a set which includes the two guns and even a pack of poker cards to keep the theme going. Oh, and did I tell you that they're limited to 1,200 sets of these all over? Let's take a closer look at the revolvers, shall we? They come as a pair in the box, as I've already said, which also includes that set of cards, and not just the standard six shells for the revolvers, but they double up the number of shells to 12 for each gun to keep the fun going for longer. Now, this set is crying out for a distressed or antique finished box to keep them in. And I have no doubt there will be someone out there who will make one for them. I would love to see it if you do. Each one is finished in the authentic antique finish with the brown grips fitted with double aces coin inlaid into them. These are the standard 275mm length versions of the SAA and tip the scales at around 867 grams each, which makes these 10.8 inches and 1.9 pounds in Wild West language. And they feel weighty in the hand. You really know you're holding them. They are the BB versions rather than the pellet ones, but I have and would fire pellets through them 
if it was me, to keep that potential ricochet down. Will it affect the accuracy? Well, these aren't out-and-out -out target weapons. They are blinking tools, and the chances are, if you're going to be using them together, then 50% of the work is going to be done in the wrong hand. It's about fun with a capital F, but I would probably compare the accuracy of BBs and against the pellets a little later on. I've used these SAAs many times and I absolutely love them. They're one of Carl's favourites. They are pretty darn authentic, both in looks and in that action. I just love that. I could do that all day. They have a five inch length barrel, but the overall length of travel of the pellet or B, bees, is exaggerated because they are loaded to the rear of these shells. Which makes the distance travelled with the air behind them further than simply the barrel length. Hence, it will increase the power output. Mm, slightly. Don't get too excited, they aren't going to be your next close-up ratting tool of choice. The shells are fed through the side loading door rather than dropping the cylinder out. Again, adding to the authenticity and to me, the very real pleasure of using them. There is the probe to remove the shells as per the original you're not likely to need it because the shells aren't being spread out once it's been fired. And they aren't likely to get stuck the same as a used bullet. The main thing that starts, that little blue fizzy thing inside, is that hammer action. <laughs> if you've never used one, then you have a bit of a hole in your life that definitely needs filling. You really must give it a go. <laughs> it's truly wonderful. Just listen. I love it. I absolutely love it. There is a rather stiff safety catch on the underside. The original had no safety and they would often load only five shells rather than a full six, leaving the chamber empty to save any accidental discharge. Probably into the foot. Now, when I say stiff on that safety, that's a good thing in my books because this locks everything and will stop any budding junior John Waynes or Calamity Janes from getting hold of these and having any accidents. Right, let's take a look at loading these shells up, shall we? Take them out of the cylinder and then drop the ammo of your choice into the seal at the rear of each of the shells. Then drop the shells back in, one at a time, rotating the cylinder. Till you've got all six loaded. Then it's time to load the 12 gram CO2. This is done by removing half of the grip and then dropping in a CO2 Face first, and then tightening it up using the hex that is built into the side of the grip, making sure you don't lose it, which is a really nice idea. Don't over tighten it, and ideally use a spot of silicon oil to help prolong the life of your seals. If you use a decent CO2, then they are also loaded up with a tiny amount inside each cartridge. Another good reason for not buying cheap 12 gram CO2s. With all this loaded up, time to drop it over the chronograph. I think I'll use some standard steel BBs first, which weigh in at about 5.37 grains, and they saw 361 feet per second, which is 1.55 foot pounds or 2.11 joules. Then, dropping some pellets in, I thought I'd go with pretty standard 8.44 grains. But I would probably use this with the economy pellets, personally, which are a bit lighter. It saw 311 feet per second, which is 1.81 foot-pounds, or 2.46 joules. So, like I said, 
not any good for pest control, but it will protect you and your kin from those baddies dressed up as soda cans. Fizzy pop cans to you and I. Let's just compare the BBs to the pellets, shall we, and see if there is really any difference in accuracy. BBs first. A pair of Colt SAAs. I really like these things, I really do. So no matter what Umarex do, they've got me on their side. Right, okay. I promised that what we were going to do was shoot the BBs down these, because they are technically classed as BB guns. They're not pellet, then the barrel isn't rifled, it's just smooth, but which means that it's not a good idea to shoot BBs down a rifle barrel, which is intended for pellets, but you can shoot pellets down uh, a BB barrel because it's smooth and it's not going to do any damage at all. So, but of course what you are going to do is you're going to potentially cut down on some ricochets. Does it make any difference to the accuracy? We've seen that it makes a little bit of difference to the power because the lead is a little bit heavier and it carries a bit more energy. It's, again, it's not, a sh it's not a hunting thing, but does it do anything to the accuracy? Here we go. Enough talk. Let's get on with it. 10 metres. Now I'm going to struggle to see this. First one caught me out a little bit. I wasn't ready for the trigger. That's it. That is the BBs. Now, to be honest, looking at that, I don't think that's bad at all. Let's now try it with same gun. We won't swap guns over but we'll put pellets, so lead pellets, into this one. And like I said, I would probably use the Econ pellets, which are a brand of H&N, I do believe. There we go. Uh, which are, are these. I think you'll see it on... Anyway, I'll bring a picture up. Uh, they're a lot cheaper, so you're more or less getting it down to BB pricing because they're like half the price of a normal tin of pellets, if not a little bit less. And over 10 metres, it really doesn't matter. We're not going for ultimate, ultimate accuracy. What I have done this time round, just because I've got a tin open, 7.33 grain JSBs. Uh, we'll put another target in it and we'll see how we go. Right, new target in. Let's give it a go, shall we? Quick look, I don't know whether you can pick this up. The one in my right hand, so it's on your left, was the BBs. The one in my left hand, so it's on your right, was the pellets. If anything, well, I don't think there's a great deal in it. The grouping is different, and a lot of them were probably tighter with the BBs. But overall, if we put measurements on it, they're all very much a muchness with the odd one going out probably the bb's has it slightly rather than the pellet but to be honest it surprised me because there are no adjustable sights you're actually aiming down the groove off the top of these things and i don't think that is a bad result in anybody's books from what is essentially a fun gun i'm impressed so, what is it likely to cost you to have this limited edition pair with the extra cards and shells? Well, they are limited, which can often mean a premium price. They're around £485, which means they are pretty close to the price of two standard ones, plus extras with a slight premium for its exclusivity. Now, some will class these as a little expensive for their budget. 
and other fans of the SAA will love the idea of a little exclusivity and happy to pay a slight premium for it. Thank goodness we're all different. <laughs> you know, I'd love to take the credit for that by fanning and shooting it like that. Now, I missed every one, to be perfectly honest. That was a bit of Hollywood. Uh, no, I sat down and then did it from a target, from a resting position. I'm not that good. I dare say there are people who could do it quite easily. I am not one of those. It's great fun. The thing isn't designed actually to be fanned, but it was great fun just doing it for the show. Yes, get yourself a holster, get yourself a double holster, because after all, you've got two of these. And that's what it's all about. Absolute fun. But not only that, Limited as well. I like it. Of course, all the cowboy gear is probably going to cost you considerably more if you get hooked. <laughs> I do I really enjoy these SAA revolvers and I've enjoyed these two and they have been great fun. Well, there is also a new underlever that Umrex have launched, which is called the Rio Bravo. And I'll be looking at that next time, hopefully. That's it from me. Just leaves me to say, thumbs up, please. Subscribe, click the alarm bell, check out this little lot, take a look at the AAR website, and give the guys at hey, Airgun Factory on Facebook a look. A big thank you to the guys at Umarex, and of course, Vector Air, with the biggest thanks going out to you guys for watching. Stay safe and shoot safe. And hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye for now.